So today, let's talk about boring and reaming, and when you might want to use one method over the other. And I want to talk about tight tolerance hole making, specifically in milling, not turning, and from a mile high view. So there's tons of tools that can be used to make a precision hole, and we can't cover them all. But some of the more common tools are reamers and boring heads, and there are a lot of variations within these two groups. So both of these types of tools are used to enlarge a pre-existing drilled hole and improve the surface finish of that hole. So when do you want to use a reamer, and when do you want to use a boring head? Well, the main things to consider are the tolerance of the hole, and that means diameter and perpendicularity, the size of the hole, and the desired surface finish. A few other factors that might come into play are versatility of the tool, the cost of the tool, and the life of the tool. So both reamers and boring heads can give you excellent hole quality and achieve extremely tight tolerances, down to plus or minus a tenth. Traditionally, a reamer would yield a better surface finish, but modern boring heads are usually just as good. When drilling holes that are going to need to be reamed or bored, I've always used a simple rule of thumb when it comes to the stock allowance, and that's to drill the hole undersized by 3-5% to of the reamer diameter. So for a half inch hole, I'll drill it to roughly 482. Now that's just a general rule up to like 1 inch diameter. After that, you're probably going to be using a boring head, and it's best to look at the nose radius of your boring head insert, and make sure that you aren't taking such a small amount that your cutter is rubbing, but not so much that you end up with taper or chatter or other problems. Something to consider about a reamer is that it's almost always going to follow your drilled hole. So if your drill walked, your reamer probably will too. In cases where perpendicularity of the hole is critical, a reamer probably isn't the way to go. However, if it's a pretty shallow hole and your reamer is a stub length solid carbide tool, you'll probably be fine. It's also important to keep in mind that these tools should continue to rotate and feed out of the hole to avoid leaving scratches or swirls in your hole. Because of the many different types of reamers that are available, a reamer can be more versatile than a boring head. For example, most boring heads can only create a cylindrical hole where a reamer can be tapered or combined into specialty profiles like porting tools. Reamers can also be very cost effective when they're made from high speed steel or high speed steel with cemented carbide tips, and they can also be solid carbide. Now, if you need to make an 8 inch diameter bore, Odds are you're not going to be able to find a reamer that big and you'll find yourself using bridge style boring heads. Adjustable boring heads can also be used to create many different hole sizes within a given range where a reamer is just a fixed size. And there's also a pretty big price difference between these two types of tools. What makes boring heads worth the extra cost is that one boring head can replace many different sized reamers. Boring heads are often indexable, so it'll be cheaper to replace an insert than to replace a solid carbide reamer. Like taps, reamers are good for most soft materials and steels, but once you hit a certain level as a machinist and you're working with super alloys and harder, more unforgiving materials, boring can be so much faster and more efficient than reaming. In the end, both of these tools are great for making precision holes of high quality, and which tool you choose will depend on your specific part and application. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon.